You know, it was, it was a, a middle-class upbringing. My mom did odd jobs. You know, they, they just wanted something better. I mean, my grandparents came over from Russia, and, you know, my dad was the first generation, and my uncles were the first generation Americans, like my mom, too. And, you know, like every child of immigrants, they wanted better for their kids. You know, it's funny. I mean, a lot of people grow up that way, uh -huh. right? But not many people end up like you. So what do you think that's the result of? I think, you know, everybody's got something that they're good at. And the hard part is just finding it. And I found out early that I was a good salesperson, that I really liked business. You know, like I like sports. I mean, I read everything I possibly could, played sports as much as I could, just wasn't as good as I wanted to be. And, and business was the same way. I mean, as long as I could remember, I was buying and selling baseball cards, garbage bags, whatever I could find, stamps um, to collectors. But I was also reading everything I possibly could about business. And, you know, I was that unusual kid that, I'd rather read about Ted Turner than go to the movies. And, and so I think that created a foundation. And my parents didn't always, my dad used to always say, I don't understand what you're doing, <laughs> but I'm glad you're doing it. And, and so I had my ups and downs along the way, of course. But um, I just think that I just, I just put in the time and was fortunate enough to really get excited about business. And that paid off benefits over the long haul. At the end of the day, um, if you're going to be great at something, you've got to make the effort to be great at something. Um, whether it's sports, whether it's physics, math, science, business, whatever it may be, you know, it's not just a natural skill. You've got, you've got to, to learn, and particularly if you're in the technology industry, because it changes every day. You know, when I got started, and, and you know, after I got, I, I got, a, I was a bartender when I first came to Dallas, got into the PC industry, got fired, started my own company, but there, I learned early on that there was always something new and most people didn't put in the time to learn it. It's like now with artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about artificial intelligence. Lots of people talk about machine learning and neural networks. Not a lot of people are putting in the time to take classes or do the tutorials or to, to learn how to apply it to business and that's what it takes. And, and you know, that's just something I've always enjoyed so that I've been fortunate in it. Write down the principles. Okay, write down the principles and then convert those to algorithms. Like this has been a big deal for us. Um, so if, we're, look, the same things happen over and over again, every time, right? So what's decision making? What am I going to do if I'm in that set of circumstances? Okay, you got to write it down. There's a power to writing it down. If you write it down, then you can agree on what the best ones are. And then you can convert those to algorithms. We convert those to algorithms and they become the decision rules that think better than us. It, so it's been fantastic. But this process is somewhat controversial, Ray. And is it, is it worth it? I mean, you've opened yourself up to criticism. People have um, written negative things about this process. Is it really worth it? Well, what, yeah, it's not for everybody, okay? It's not one of, it, the real question is, can you get past your egos and your blind spots? Can you, in an idea meritocratic way, find out what your weaknesses and your strengths are? I mean, that's the defining difference, right? Uh, is it worth it? I look back on 42 years of doing this, and you know, and I'm at, at this stage of my life. I've had not just the success of the business, but I've had the best possible relationships, right? Let me give you one sentence that characterizes what we're doing. Um, that's why explaining it in the book is important. We have an idea meritocracy in which the goals are, goals are two, to have meaningful work and meaningful relationships, or to be great at work and to be, have great relationships because they support each other. It's tough love, you can have tough love. So um, have an idea meritocracy with the goals being meaningful work and meaningful relationships through radical truthfulness and radical transparency. In other words, put what you think on the table and let everybody see and have that meritocracy. It attracts people because it makes people, everybody, a part of that decision. In other words, if what? If I'm not gonna be able to tell you what I think and you're not gonna be able to tell you what you, you think and we're not gonna be able to work that through, what kind of relationship are we gonna have? Just the boss telling everybody? You can't make people part of the organization. They can't be essentially owners in the outcome if they don't feel like they can make sense of things and be part of that. So that's been the magic. Well, I've, I've said many times that, that, that if you get to be 65 or 70 
and later. And, and the people that you want to have love you actually do love you. You're a success. I've never seen anybody that reaches that age. I mean, I'm not talking about somebody that's in extreme poverty or pain or something, but I've never seen anybody that, if they have a lot of people that, that love them, that is other than happy. And I've seen some very, very wealthy people that they give testimonial dinners to and name schools after and everything. They're, nobody, nobody loves them, you know. Their own kids would say, he's in the attic, he's in the attic, you know. <laughs> they never came. <laughs> What are, say, three pieces of advice you would give to people who are looking to succeed in business? Well, I, by far the best investment you can make is in yourself. I mean, that, for example, communication skills. I tell those students that come that uh, they're going to graduate schools and business and they, they're learning all these complicated formulas and all that. If they just learn to communicate better, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, if you can't communicate, somebody says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And and you have to be able to get get forth your ideas, and uh, and that's that's relatively easy. I did it myself with the Dale Carnegie course. Some people wish I'd taken a shorter course now <laughs> in terms of my talking later on, but it, it it's just hugely important. And you, if you invest in yourself, nobody can take it away from you. I mean, you you and. Uh, the second thing, which I'll get a certain criticism for not living it, but but I do tell the those students, you know, that if I gave you a car and it'd be the only car you get the rest of your life, you, you'd take care of it like you can't believe. Any scratch you'd fix that moment, you'd read the owner's manual, you'd keep a garage and do all these things, and you get exactly one mind and one and one body in this world. And and you can't start taking care of it when you're fifty. By that time you'll have rusted out if you haven't done anything. So you you should you should really make sure that you just remember that you just got one mind and body to get through life with and to do the most with it. What about life advice? Well, life advice is, uh, you know, the most important thing, uh, aside from the things I've talked about already, is, is really who you associate with. You want to associate with people that are better than you are. I mean, basically, you'll go in the direction of the people that you associate with, and, and you want to have the right heroes. Uh, you want people, if you want to emulate somebody, you better pick very carefully who you want to emulate. And, uh, and when, obviously, you can't pick your parents, uh, uh, they're going to have an enormous influence on you, but you don't get a choice on that. But you get choices as you go down the line. And you, uh, who, you, uh, who you admire, who you, who, you, who you want to copy, and the most important for most people in terms of that decision is their spouse. It's also important in terms of a partner in business, but the partner in life is, is, is the most important one. You, you want to pick a spouse that's a little bit better than you are, <laughs> and then he or she, and, hope, and you hope they don't f figure it out too fast. <laughs> Great. Biggest mistakes people make when investing? Well, they, they, they try to, they, they, they just don't realize that all you have to do is just buy a cross section of America and then never listen to people like me or read the papers or do anything subsequently. Uh, that, uh, they, think, they think that because you can trade, you should trade. They, you buy a farm, you buy an apartment house, you can't resell it tomorrow. And you know, the cost of moving around. Or you, now you get something handed to you, liquidity, you know, which is instant, you can sell, and the, the cost of doing it are pennies you know, compared to other kinds of investment activity. So because they can, so easily move around, they do move around, and moving around is not smarter than investing. You have a pretty cool uh, morning routine regarding what you have for breakfast and how prosperous you feel. What is that? Well, uh, that uh, I now actually send somebody over to McDonald's usually to get me something. <laughs> since 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 the publicity I got from earlier describing my habits at McDonald's, <laughs> I I now somebody have them have somebody go in the office, but uh, that was. That was uh, more for entertainment value. I, I actually eat, I eat exactly what I like to eat. If, if I liked it on my sixth birthday, at my sixth birthday party when we had hot dogs and hamburgers and Coke and ice cream with chocolate, I still like it. And I don't care about anything subsequently. That I, I discovered it all by the time I was six. And if, if somebody had offered me a deal when I was 20 and said, you're gonna live one year longer you know, instead of living to 88, you'll live to 89 or whatever it may be. If you eat nothing but broccoli and Brussels sprouts and onions and all these things, you know, I, 
I just said, I'll, you know, take the last year off. It probably won't be that good anyway. You know, I mean, so I, uh, I eat what I like to eat. I, 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 uh, I, I am not venturesome in that area. I like how you've lumped in onions with broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Well, I've never I, heard I, that. I, I just don't happen to like onions, but uh, no, that, I don't put them in the same category. Okay. <laughs> you and George H.W. Bush, I think. Um, is business school worth it? Depends on the person, but, uh, much more than it depends on the school. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry. Some people are going to get a lot out of advanced education, and some people are going to get uh, very little. And uh, I, I don't even think it's important that every person go to college at all. I mean, we have all kinds of jobs at 70 or so thousand a year, 80,000 a year, that c college training is, is, is not of use. And, and I, I actually was not keen on going to college really? myself. Yeah, my dad. Uh, kind of jollied me into it. He could get me to do anything. But and if they'd had an SAT test in those days, he would have taken the test for me. <laughs> but but because uh, I, I just, I, I was, I, I knew I could have a good time and I, I liked investing and I didn't really feel, I, I, I could read the books. Uh, uh, so I don't, you know, it's, it's a big commitment to take four years and the, the cost involved and maybe the loans involved and everything. I think depending on what your interests are in life, uh, I don't. Th I don't think it's for everybody. I think it's for a lot of people. Uh, but there ought to be a reason you're going, and I didn't really see much reason. All right, last question. It's a lightning round. So there's a few. Um, do you ever drink water? Only under uh, duress. <laughs> what is your favorite all-time song? Or? Uh, it, it's undoubtedly it, it's my way. What about movie? Favorite movie? Well, I like the bridge on the river Kwai because of the, the, there were a lot of lessons in that. Plus it was, a, you know, enormously fascinating. Catchy tune also. All right. Catchy tune also. Yeah, yeah right. very. Right. But that, the ending of that was uh, sort of the story of life, you know. It's, it's, he created the railroad, <laughs> and, and did, he really, did he really want the, the enemy to come in across it? You know. It, Got it. Favorite book? Well, the favorite book from an investor, the, the book that had the most impact on my life was *The Intelligent Investor* by Ben Graham. I knew you were going to say that. Um, favorite TV show? Hmm. It's, it's probably going to be. Uh, uh, it would be Nebraska in some huge bowl game and winning. <laughs> and finally, what do you carry in your wallet and how much money do you tend to carry around? Well, I probably carry uh, maybe $400. I, I actually, uh, my, my wife likes to use cash, so I, I just take home uh, a, a chunk of cash every now and then, and then she doles it out. She looks at my billfold and sees it whether all the hundreds are gone. <laughs> Six of you in there. But, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. And the credit cards? I've got an American Express card, which I got in 1964, but I I pay cash 98% of the time. If I'm in a restaurant, I always pay cash. It's just easier. Warren Buffett, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.